So the why? Tell me what the Wi-Fi pineapple is, Alex. Uh, Wi-Fi pineapple is a hardware device you can buy that uh, runs its own operating system. So it's a little box with a bunch of antennas popping out of it. Uh, you can hook up to your computer, and you it has this nice little web interface and lets you do lots of really interesting and mostly illegal stuff with Wi-Fi. Uh, so, uh, and I know the guy who sells it. <laughs> yeah, is, is Hack Five been? Yeah, uh, yeah, a good friend. Ha- yeah, he's a good friend. The Hack Five. I used to work with the uh, Hack Five. Yeah. Um, uh, and I have mis- I've mixed feelings about this. They they say it's for pen testing, and, and it is used for that. And I have used it for that. I, I use it mostly for educational purposes, right? So when I teach Wi-Fi in my fall classes about cybersecurity, yeah. my spring classes about trust and safety, but in the fall I, I teach a cyber class and I do a demo uh, where I intercept people's connections and pull up. <laughs> One of the interesting things you can do with it is you know. So you're you're the fun professor. Uh, <laughs> yes, my my ratings uh, my. My reviews are really good until I get fired, right? Like that's the, uh, <laughs> uh, I think that's the plus here. So one of the cool things it does is, you know, something people don't really understand is that when you add a device to a Wi-Fi network um, and it remembers it, it will beacon for that. It will look for the beacon in the future. So your computer is effectively constantly saying, hey, anybody here Starbucks? Hey, anybody here is naming my home network and such. So like one of the fun demos I do is while I'm giving the Wi-Fi lecture, I'm sniffing in the background. Of course, all of the students, there's about 200 students in that class. They all have laptops open. 90% of them are probably not paying attention. Something, again, I can figure out with the Wi-Fi pineapple. Um, and, uh, <laughs> I see you browsing uh, your, uh, your, your, your uh, yeah. blue sky How is page. TikTok today? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and uh, when they, uh, you know, at the end, I show, you know, whose network is this, whose network is this, and you have people raising their hand of, like, that's my parents' network, that's the hotel I just went to and such. So it does all kinds of interesting stuff. Like, one of the things you use it for is to pretend to be wireless network. So it has a radio that you can push perhaps a little bit beyond what the FCC says is a uh, acceptable level of power output uh, in the unregulated spectrum. And so what you can do is uh, if you're in a a public network, you can have it broadcast at a higher uh, decibel level and take over and other, and people will associate to it. And then it will route all that traffic over. uh, You can have it go over like a a GSM card or, you know, LTE or over a, you know, a hard wire if you have it. Um, and then you can sniff all of that traffic. You watch it as it goes out stuff. to the internet. Yeah. They still think they're on the internet, but they're going through right. you. All stuff you can do with like a properly configured Linux laptop and such, right. but like this just makes it all easy. And because it has its own CPU, you have your computer attached, you tell it what to do, and then you can walk away and you can leave it there. Yeah. So that's often, I, we have used it for penetration tests. You, um, a good place for it especially if you have a battery pack attached to it, uh, is the restrooms in the lobby, right? So if you can use a restroom in the lobby of a building uh, and they have a drop ceiling, you can go put it in the drop ceiling and let it oh, uh, take over Wi-Fi. So this is my mixed feelings about this. And, you know, I've never talked to Darren about it, but uh, uh, it's 120 bucks. Yes. A script kitty could use this. And that's my problem is if you're going to do it with a configured Linux laptop, you know what you're doing. Not necessarily, but yes, I, it, it is one of these interesting tools where effectively almost anything you do with it's illegal unless you're doing it in a Faraday cage, right? So right. Like doing most of the stuff. <laughs> but it's not, legal to sell it even though anything you yes. could do with it would be illegal. Yes. Isn't that funny? Freedom, man. Freedom. So so Shira Ovid at the Washington Post had a piece today saying five things you shouldn't worry about. Number one was using Wi-Fi in a public space. Okay. That's changed Light a little bit. I mean, it, since the days of Fire Sheep where you were sending unencrypted traffic and somebody could impersonate you. But this thing, as 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 Alex just explained, but let me say it. So, Jeff, you were just at a hotel somewhere and using their Wi-Fi. You still have that in your list of Wi-Fis that you've accessed. Mm-hmm. The pineapple can impersonate it and can be stronger than the coffee shop Wi-Fi. So your laptop, without any, you know, talking to you, will say, oh, hey, no we're boy, back no at the hotel. Me. Yeah, let's check in. Uh, it's a better signal. I mean, things are better now in that HTTPS has become pretty much ubiquitous. Yeah, right? thanks to it, Google, HTTPS thanks to Google, everywhere. Thanks yep. to you know uh, HTTPS anywhere. Yeah, uh, like yep. plugin makers. Um, thanks to Let's Encrypt, the EFFs project to give which it makes it easier to be SSL. Honestly, yeah. thanks to Ed Snowden. I mean, we don't want to do a whole <laughs> Snowden thing. I have mixed feelings here, but like you know, there was a massive move to encrypt, and I I saw a bunch of that. I was a CISO at Yahoo. Yahoo would not have done all the work necessary, which was very expensive and very difficult, to encrypt all of Yahoo's sites to HTTPS all the time if it wasn't for the Snowden disclosure. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. It, it turned out it was very difficult at, at for 
for anybody who wasn't Google and therefore in a fully contained ecosystem, because there's a huge ecosystem problem. Like every bit of JavaScript you pulled in, every analytics platform you used, right? All that stuff had to go to HTTPS. And it was all distributed on a bunch of servers. Yeah. You may not even have owned all the servers. Right, right. And so it took years to get yeah. there. And it basically happened because of the Snowden disclosures, because it turned out that- I thought it was Fire Sheep. Fire Sheep seemed like the, the tipping point when, when any idiot could go into a right. coffee shop and steal your Facebook Which you could have done for a long time before that using a variety of tools. But oh, yeah. Tools of like you had to be running Linux. You had to yeah. tweak the kernel a little well, bit. Well, see, that's my point with the yeah. pineapple. As soon as it gets easy, 